today's video, I'm going to show you my top five favorite Bluebeam tips and tricks that have helped me in the construction industry, and I believe will help you too. Let's go. So just a quick background on Bluebeam review and what it is if you're not in the construction industry. Bluebeam is the best PDF editing software on the market for construction. It's used by millions of professionals worldwide because it's simple, intuitive, powerful, and also it's the most frequent tool that I use on a daily basis to help communicate and process information. Now, there are tons of simple markup and editing functions within Bluebeam that I can cover in a future video if you wanna see that. But for today, I'm gonna to focus on my top five favorite tips and tricks that are worth their weight in gold. Number one, scaling a drawing using the calibrate and measuring tool. Construction drawings have scales. A drawing scale is reflected by two dimensions. The first dimension is the drawing dimension, and the second dimension is what would be on the actual building. So if you see one inch dash one foot, this means that one inch on your drawing equals one foot of real life in your building. Architects will usually put a disclaimer on their drawings telling you not to scale even though they give you a scale on every detail and page. This is to prevent mistakes and finger pointing. So I advise you to be extremely cautious when scaling drawings because you're technically not supposed to and you're taking on risk by assuming that you're scaling correctly. A better way to approach this is to submit a request for information or an RFI asking your architect to give you a specific dimension or elevation which can be added onto the drawing. This takes the risk and the assumption out of the equation by giving you exactly what's needed. You'll have to just determine what the level of risk is when scaling something and if it's worth it to you at the end. Okay, I'm gonna use this drawing page to show you the two ways to scale. First, I'm gonna use the measurement tool to show you that we are not currently set up to scale. As you can see, 25 feet and 14 feet are different lengths, so it's not set up correctly. So the first way to go about scaling is by using a known dimension. So we're gonna go back up to the top of the page and select our calibrate tool to actually establish a correct scale. We're gonna use this first technique by using two points of a known length. We're not gonna use the scale at the bottom of the page. That will be method two. So I've selected from point one to point two and I know that it's 14 feet. So I can ignore the first number and then select 14 for the second number. I can click apply scale and then go back to my measurement tool and test it out. There we go, 14 feet. You're ready to start scaling using method one. But remember, every detail has a different scale, so if you're flipping around the drawings, you'll have to recalibrate every time you move to a different drawing with a different scale. Let's take a look at method two. This is calibrating your scale using your actual scale listed on the detail, which is one quarter inch to one foot in this case. When using method two in Bluebeam to calibrate your scale, you don't actually have to click two specific points because you're manually entering both numbers of the scale. So once I've done a double check, I'm ready to go and I'm ready to start scaling. So my second Bluebeam tip is using the overlay tool to compare old drawings and new drawings. Architects will usually bubble the changes when they come out in the new drawing to identify exactly where the changes occur, but sometimes things get missed. I always like to do this as a back check to make certain that we're not missing anything when a new drawing is established. Okay, so I pulled up an old drawing and a new drawing to provide an example of this. Let's go up to the Documents tab and then scroll down to Overlay Pages. So before I click OK, let's take a look at this. The new drawing is going to show as green currently, and the old drawing is going to show as red. So if you want to change these colors, just double click on it and you can select it as you please. Let's change them. I'm going to select the old drawing to show as blue and the new drawing to show as orange. And then I'm going to click OK. So if I zoom in, you can see drawing changes that happen in the last revision are showing as this light blue. The new changes are showing as this orange. So we can specifically see what was on the old drawing, what's on the new drawing, and what's changed between the two. This is a little bit easier than having a drawing set side by side where some small detail might not appear as easily as you would see if it was color coded. This will help you price changes. This will help you communicate changes to the field team much more easily than just uploading the new drawing set and saying, here you go, good luck. All right, so tip number three is similar to tip number two in using the overlay tool, but we're gonna add a step. We're going to align some points and we're gonna do this to help coordinate potential conflicts between drawings. Let's take a look. I've got a landscaping plan pulled up and a technology plan pulled up. These are usually drawn by different designers. So let's use this overlay tool and we'll align three different points to make sure that they're proportionally accurate when they're actually overlaid together. 
I'm going to select black on the landscaping plan and red on the technology plan to see the difference. So Bluebeam is asking us to find three identical points between the landscaping drawings and the technology drawings or whatever drawings you're going to use. So I've already done the liberty of finding these three points, but you'll have to go and find them on your own and make sure that they're accurate so that your drawings overlay perfectly. Okay. Now that they're overlaid, I'm going to check for some coordination issues. For the most part, this drawing set looks good, but right here I see a tree and a quasi box, which may be conflicting. This tip is great when you're comparing plumbing drawings to in-wall drawings, to structural drawings, to architectural drawings. You can really use any drawing set and it'll proportionally overlay them so you're accurately looking at this. Okay, so on to tip number four, which is pretty simple. It's actually just a search function. It's control plus F, which opens up the search menu. Once you're in the search menu, you can actually search by the current page you're on, the current document, or actually all open documents. Give it some time if you've got multiple documents open so that it can actually read through all of them. But then it'll show you which page each of this information appears on, and you can just jump through it and find it much more quickly than scanning on your own. Okay, tip number five, which I use more than any other tool. It's the snapshot tool. All you have to do is press the hotkey G, then click and drag over any other part of the document. It'll copy the selected region onto your clipboard and then paste it into an email, a Word document, or another PDF by right-clicking and selecting Paste or by pressing Control-V. I always think that having visuals is important when communicating information, and this helps me annotate drawings very easily or provide side-by-side -side drawings for markups. So that's it for my top five Bluebeam tips and tricks. If you enjoyed it, drop a comment below and don't forget to subscribe. And as always, bye, bye for now. now.